We continue discussing big man things, awareness and accountability this evening with the Roots Foundation. We're very happy to have our first grouping today. Well, we're speaking with CEO MT Masolwazi, as well as teaching artist Isaiah John, who deals more with spoken word, and Emmanuel Villafana, a coach. Now, gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us this evening. And team, I want to start off with you, thanks. Just giving a little, even before we get into our first question, Roots Foundation, what is Roots Foundation about? So a pleasant good evening to you and your viewing audience. And a happy new year for, to everyone. As mentioned, I'm M. Tima Solowazi. And Roots Foundation is an acronym, Roots. It stands for Reflections of Our Oral Traditions. And at Roots Foundation, we use oral traditions with a focus on spoken word as a catalyst for social change. And that is done by providing safe spaces for youth self-expression. And we do this in three ways, festivals, intervention, and media outreach. In a nutshell, that is what Roots Foundation is about. Short and sweet, thank you very much. Now moving to the gentleman, before I go back to you, and I just want to start off a little, Isaiah, then Emmanuel. What are your thoughts as man when you hear GBV or gender-based violence? Um, my thoughts is, so it's something that we as our people have to, um, have to learn more about, learn more about, especially as men. Um, you know, we we'll just see it as something that they can just straight and use. I, mean, I believe that GBV is something that should be instilled and should be thought, thought what, what it is and what it is about as from as, as young as primary school, you know. And, and I think that once boys are more educated on, on this subject. It should have a, it should create a, a, a great impact in the future. And you feel you feel you feel the same, Emmanuel? Yeah, uh, when I think about uh, gender based violence, we know there's something that has been plaguing not only I mean Trinidad and Tobago, you know, the Caribbean like central the world, it is an international problem, you know what I mean? Uh, as as I did, as Isaiah was saying it is something that I think we need to definitely tackle hands-on from as young as possible, especially where, as it relates to awareness. Of course, we know that it doesn't only go from man to woman, it's woman to man as well. And we know that it happens not only physically, but we know emotionally, psychologically as well. So I think definitely a lot more needs to be done. Uh, when, when I hear that term, I, I think about awareness, how many people understand that this is, is not okay. You know, I mean, this is not cool. This doesn't make you more of a man. Or, or, or a woman for, for that for that matter. So that, that is definitely what comes to mind first and foremost when I hear gender-based violence. And I'll get your thoughts on it now, thanks, M. Timo. I didn't hear you. And I'll take your thoughts. When What comes to mind when yeah. you hear gender-based violence? And I'll even add in a word that, uh, that Emmanuel just used in terms of saying it's not just physical, but it can also be words as well. And, lo and I ask you this as CEO of an NGO that deals with the word and with oral traditions? So, as Emmanuel said, I'll, I'll jump off from Emmanuel's um, comments. It, it is something that affects both genders, male and female. And I think that um, that awareness is important. Um, when I hear the term gender-based violence, um, automatically, you, you tend to think it's like a one-way stream where men abusing women, but it also happens in the other way. But what we need to really do in terms of speaking to our young boys, our men, we need to really make them aware of, of their, I'm gonna say their roles. I know people like to jump off um, I'm gonna use the terms role, right? But we need to speak to our young boys, our young men, on how they should negotiate one power and how they should negotiate two vulnerable emotions because these are probably two of the, the main things that can lead to gender-based violence from the male perspective our lack of negotiating power and our lack of negotiating 
our own vulnerable feelings, you know? And what we try to do, especially through the oral traditions, give you that space to express yourself. So spoken word is such a powerful medium that you could go on a stage, right, and share how you feel and not be judged by it. So we really, we exploit that concept of um, using spoken word to get both genders, male and female, to share and express how they feel. And I, I'm, I want to jump to Emmanuel and Isaiah now. I'm not sure who's going to take it first. But the fact that both of you all spoke about raising awareness and doing that from a young age. I don't know if Isaiah or Emmanuel want to answer, because you all, you all deal, deal with mentorship as well. So is that one of the things that you all put into your mentorship programs, whether on an overt basis, as this is a, a topic that we're going to tackle, or is it something that you just kind of slip in there just by the way you do what it is you do? Most definitely, it's something that it's something that we focus on. It's something that we focus on, especially gen gender. It's something that we focus on. You know, um, we have a part of our workshop. Um, MT Marketing is called Male Mailbox and Female Box, and we ask and we ask the youth, the youth and them. So, how you would how would you describe a, a male? And and some would say strong, strong, brave, resilient. You know, hard headed, and then somebody's, and then you ask them, all right, now let go over to the female box. So I just describe a female soft spoken, gentle, you know, like, and, and all of these, and they say girls just cry. So then after we create the box, we bring, we, we bring it together, and we say, and we say, okay, so what, what we could use from the the female box that could also put into the male box. And you create this whole circle, this whole extra circle that to show that, you know, everybody has emotions, everybody has feelings, and 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 these values could go both ways. And now, uh Emmanuel, I want you, I want you to elaborate on that a little bit, please. We're not asking you to make out anybody, call no name, we're not going to whistle, but having taken someone through that exercise of the male box and the female box. Do you, have you seen like differences in perceptions before and after as opposed to, hey, hey, I didn't know that fella was supposed to be able to do this. Uh, have, you, have you experienced anything like that, taking people through that exercise, Emmanuel? Yeah, definitely. I mean, you'd be, su you'd be surprised, probably almost baffled to, to the, 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 the surprise in their faces when you realize, okay. And I mean, one of, one of our first set of students that we did this uh, exercise with was primary school students, right? Standard five, not preparing for SC, et cetera. And you'd be surprised how many of them were surprised to know that it's okay for a man to be gentle or it's okay for a guy to cry, you know? That is okay. There's nothing wrong against that. And it's not something that is to be laughed at. You understand? Because that would have been the first reaction if, if one of the fellows said, okay, it's okay for boys to cry. The whole audience might laugh at them. But after we talk, and we, we, we go through the, the exercise with them, I think everybody comes to that understanding that, hey, here's what, this is not as, as taboo as we might make it out to be, or as unusual as we, as we might make it out to be. So it really goes a very long way, especially, as I said, I was saying, and dealing with these young people, goes a long way in showing them that, that these gender roles are not as, as straight or as rigid mm -hmm. as, as society paints it to be, yeah? And I want to talk about creating that space where you can go through and have that realization. But we do that on the other side of the break. Stay with us. We'll return with more. Welcome back. We are speaking with MT Masol Wazi, Emmanuel Villafana, and Isaiah John of the Roots Foundation. Big man things here on TTT. Thank you once more, gentlemen, for making the time. And MT, I want to ask a little bit in terms of creating that space so that there's this level of trust, so people can break down some of their rigid defenses, be, allow themselves to become a little more vulnerable, especially the fellas that you're dealing with. What goes into creating a space or an environment like that? All right, uh, well, first, I just want to make a slight correction. I didn't create the 
concept of the mailbox and the um, female box is something that um, we use previously from another program. And I found it was so useful that um, we decided to incorporate it in our program. But what goes into creating that space? DK, you have to be real. We have to be real. Far too often, we try to put on this false image and this false representation for young people, and they see right through us. They may, they may be very respectful not to say, watch them, jokers. They're lying, they're making that up. No, we are real, that is one. We try not to make our participants and our facilitators feel uncomfortable, right? So we don't judge you by your comments. We don't say, oh, you can say that, or why you should say that. A matter of fact, I will we just part to say that we incorporate in a lot of our programs what I learned at Silvall call the full, the gospel according to Silvall, respectful intervention. Um, we don't we, we, lack of cultural arrogance, attentive listening, and the philosophy of ignorance. So we don't approach any program as though we know everything. A matter of fact, in every workshop, in every interaction with youth, it's a sharing. We learn, they learn. And also, most importantly, we try to have balance. So if anyone in their mind may feel that empty ma, I'm singling out me because, all right, I'm the founder of the organization, the, the key, the, one of probably the main person, MTMA gives me more preference as opposed to the other. No. We try to be balanced because we don't want a case where the, the, the both gender, it could be doing both, male and female, feel that this one have more preference over the other. Because once you create that environment, you have a level of mistrust. Also, last year I will say, we call out each other. DK and Trinidad and Tobago, we call out each other. And we allow the men or the boys to call out one another when you're ill. Real example, one of our young men, I got a report that he beat up his girlfriend. But we call him out. And we call him out in a big way. We went down to his community, I wouldn't say the community, we spoke to the key person in the community, one of the main influencers. We said, here what's going on. This is the situation. He called up the young man, and we call him out. Hey, we don't do that. That is not our style. Now, I am 48, telling a 17-year-old that. Here what I did also. I took him outside to Emmanuel and Isaiah, who is 24 and 20, closer to him. And I will let Isaiah and Emmanuel tell you what they told him, because we call him out. We don't play that because gender-based violence on either side, male or female, is not fashionable. And no one has the right upon themselves to, to, to lash or injure or harm another person. So I'll hand it over to, to those young men. They can share how they address that young man in terms of him beating his girlfriend. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Take it away. Mm. Well, yeah, well, when, when the situation occurred, um, both of us, we, 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 we heard before and we were, it was a day, it was a process, it was a military process, to talk about, like, when he see him and he was like, he told him, he said, I want thing we don't accept, you know, we, we don't accept that the violence, the violence against so we don't accept it. So, and he told him that next time, if you if hear, hear about it, like, you can't have any communication with us or anything like that, because... There shouldn't be a next time, you know, and there shouldn't be a next time. And we shouldn't have to go through this again because you have to understand what you're doing is wrong. And we, we, we put it in straight, very straight for very straight. Yeah, I think I think that's what it comes back to. Tell them plain and simple mm -hmm. that is wrong. And we being not just Roots Foundation that he goes with, but we being men, you understand, around the same age, closer to his age, saying that is not cool. That is not okay. That's not something for me to high five 
or give you a bounce and say, oh, you can you, you handle it like a man. You understand? And we as men are telling him that is not what a man does. You understand? And I think that that went a very long way in, in explaining to him, at least coming down to his level, and let him know this is not okay. This is not cool. We don't do that. And we don't expect from we don't expect that from you. All right, so that is one thing, and I applaud you all for that. But does it go the other way as well? Because in Timur talking to the 17-year-old, or you all talking to the 17-year-old, he's younger than you all. Does it go the same way when you're speaking to somebody older? Do you all have reasons to do that and call out that person? Do you all create an environment that allows for that? To say, here, what's up? You're older than me. But at the same time, from where I'm seeing it, this can't fly. Or I don't like how this happened. I would say that because, <laughs> because I tell you, empty man, you for friendly, create that space for us to, you know, have that voice, that, that expression, to say how we feel, you know, and because I, I, I don't know, like most most people who older than me not really bigger than me, you know, so they can't tell me nothing, you know, like when I tell you, I not on that and we not doing that, is is you know, like we telling it due to the with the kindness out of the kindness of your heart, you know, not yeah. not 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 even off no thing thing. You can't tell me nothing. You must respect. No, you can't respect your elders if your elders leading you wrong. Yeah, 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 definitely. It's time that we break again. That's, that's a that's cycle or another yeah. column that we are placed in where we think because we are younger or because they are older, they know better or they know everything. That's incorrect. It's time to show them, even on all fronts, as respectfully as possible, what you are doing is wrong. Mm -hmm. And there's a zero tolerance. It doesn't matter to me if you're older than me. What you're doing is wrong and it needs to be corrected. And I will not hesitate to tell you that. Yeah, plain and simple. How do you feel about that, Intima? Okay. And I asked that question because just yesterday I was having the conversation that sometimes there's a difference, sadly, between elders and olders. Because in my mind, elders are supposed to be taking you through a level of kind of evolution. As opposed to olders, they just have more tenure on this earth. They can't feel it trying to set me up, boy. Oh, gosh. <laughs> now, listen. Um... Up to recently, I was telling Emmanuel and Isaiah that they probably not even self aware of the type of privilege they have within this space that they could call me out. They just call me out, DK. You understand? And I remember the first time Emmanuel called me out, I, I was shocked. You know, I say in my mind, wow, Emmanuel brave. But it's not that Emmanuel brave. Emmanuel has been given and not just, I am not trying to take credit. This also stems from home. Values from home also extend to outside. So once some young people have that foot in, it's easier to work with them, right? And Emmanuel called me out more than once. And when he called me out, I tell him, first I apologize. I say, you're right. You know, I say, you're right, Emmanuel. And not just call me out in terms of certain actions or certain behaviors, but in certain tone, you know? Now, I have a way I speak, right? It, it, it would really ruffle a lot of people's feathers, you know? How oh, you so rough, you're so loud. You know, that is just by nature. But then, when I'm angry, you will, you will really know. Because <laughs> you will be active, you know? And they will tell me, you know, I just say, when things go long, hey, X, Y, Z. Or... Sometimes I call out myself and tell them, I think I move bad, you know? The issue to address, yes, but probably the approach I took would have been wrong, you know? And, and we, DK, the whole thing is we need to call each other out. And not just male to female, right? But uh, not just male to male, but also male to female and female to male. So I should be able to call out my wife when I find... I don't like how she move. And she should be able to call me out when she find she don't like how I move. And right you know? now, the clock calling us out and saying we run out of time. But thank <laughs> you very much, Antima. Thank you very much, Isaiah. Thank you very much, Emmanuel. And we want to thank you on behalf of the entire news team for joining us. I'm DK Roster. Have a good night.